Hi everyone, welcome to Nuts and Bolts Learning, where we look at the finer details of apps, platforms, and websites in a way that nobody else does. In this series, we're going to be investigating the JP Morgan Chase U Invest platform. I'm not a financier, I'm not licensed to sell securities, I'm not an account manager or a banker or an investment manager. I'm just someone who wanted to understand a resource I have to the best of my ability and in so doing hopefully help others along the way. So let's begin this tutorial series on the JP Morgan Chase Bank U Invest platform by signing in to our Chase account. So right now we're in the nuts and bolts of the investment tab of uh, my Chase Bank account. Um, this is investments by JP Morgan and we're on the summary tab and we're going to be going over this entire page here to understand what all of these links, these uh, tabs, these uh, radio buttons, these charts, what is all this at our disposal because it's just given to us and we don't understand it. Um, I, I have, uh, I've run into the problem which I'm sure many of you have also encountered in that not only do I need to learn about the market, but I need to learn the platform on which I'm trading. So hopefully we can do that together now. So in this video, let's start with the summary tab. And as on the top, you can see we have the value of my account. Uh, we also have the days, gains, and losses, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. This is how my account is doing currently on the market today. And this is a sum total. It depends on all my mutual funds, stocks, and other securities I have invested in my account that are fluctuating in the market today. And as a total, my account uh, lost $155 today. Now, something that I was kind of stumped on was what this other gain loss tab was. So here in my research is how I figured out to the best of my ability what I think this is. Um, gains and losses, this is gains and losses from the previous month is my theory <laughs> because uh, you have a plus and then it's a green number meaning obviously it increased but it increased from what? So days gains and losses obvious but this is a gains and loss from what reference point? So my theory is that if you scroll down, you can see what that is. And we're, we will revisit all of this that we're looking over, that we're going to skip over right now. If you scroll down to this chart here, value in dollars, this I think is where the key is. Um, this chart gives you a couple different views. So you have, if I put six months view and monthly, it's going to give me obviously six uh, reference points. Um, if I do, let's say I do three months monthly, how many points do you think I'm going to have? I'm going to have three. One, two, three. So it's it, it works together. This banner up top and then the radio buttons for daily and monthly. So I can do five years daily. I can do five years monthly. I can do three months and the same thing. So my my uh, research kind of brought me to where I thought that the gain and loss number was in relation to the month gain and loss. So I gained um, this position here. Um, the obvious question then is, you know, how much should I gain or lose in general, right? So how do I know that? Um, even if your stock went from, let's say, 40 to $45, which sounds good, um, how do you know that your stock is doing well overall? You know, what if you bought your stock at $60 and then forgot that you did, and so you checked last month, your stock was at $40, and, you know, that meant nothing to you because you didn't remember when you bought it. Maybe you bought it, maybe your parents bought it for you as a child, and now you're looking at it, right? Um, and uh, then you check a second time and your stock's now at $45 and you think, wow, that sounds great, you know, um, and you even think about uh, realizing the, the security. In other words, you, you want to quote unquote cash it out. You want to realize the security. Um, you're actually losing money, right? Even though 
you look like you're in the green, you've lost overall because you sold it at $45 when you bought it at $60. So how do you, how do you remember that? Um, I will admit, you know, I was writing all this information down on little napkins and on post-it notes because I didn't know any better. Um, but you don't have to do that, obviously. Um, you know, I think to myself, how, how do these big time investors keep track of all their information? There's got to be a way that the platform gives you. And it does. So we will be looking at that um, in a future video when we talk about trading history on the UInvest platform. So now we're not even done with the top banner, but let's talk about this estimated annual income. What is this? What is this you know, small number in comparison? Um, why is it uh, not green, right? If, if it's an income, shouldn't it be green? Shouldn't I? Um, what does that mean? So when we click that, it takes you to this PDF page here. This shows you income from your securities, which is different than the value of your securities. So income only comes in the form of dividends and interest earned from your securities. So as you can see, only two of my securities are generating income uh, and the rest don't appear. Um, this doesn't mean that my other securities aren't changing in value which we'll see when I show you uh, later on at the on the summary tab when we switch back. But uh, these investments give me dividends of some kind, um, which is why they're appearing here. So you see I have a Vanguard um, small cap growth fund and then just good old Exxon Mobil stock. Um, so apparently in December of 2020, I will be getting um, some dividends there. And then March, so it looks like they're um, what is that? Three times, uh, once a quarter maybe. One two three, one two three, one two three, one two three. Um, so uh, these two securities show up on that uh, income statement. So coming back to the home page, um, I've mentioned twice now uh, two things that appear in a later tab when we investigate the. Uh, JP Morgan Chase Bank U Invest platform. We will be looking at the trade tab um, when we go shopping for some of these securities. Um, what you know, what is a small cap fund, which I just mentioned when we looked at my annual income statement. That we will find out more in detail when we look at the trade tab, um, and then uh, that will also show us information about when we when we bought our securities. So as we scroll down, uh, we see now this uh, portfolio builder on the right. Um, it's to me kind of more of like a promotional. We're already in the, um, the nuts and bolts of the program, but I can show it to you anyway. So let's, take a, let's click that and see what happens. So here's where I am with portfolio builder. I click the, uh, the uh, learn more button and um, you can see I'm under investments and it's now looks different. I'm now under portfolio builder. And if you scroll down, it just gives you kind of videos. So if you click on any of these, it just tells you, you know, uh, what is diversification and risk tolerance? What are ETFs? Um, but we're going to learn that as we go through all the nuts and bolts anyway. Um, so most of this is just to try to convince you, to be honest, to open an account with Chase. Um, so, you know, if we click some of these things, um, you know, it's how to diversify, it's a little YouTube video. And to be honest, I, you know, I don't know if it's as um, insightful or as illuminating as what we're doing together. Um, you know, it talks about, this is the script of the video. It, t it tells you to diversify, but it doesn't tell you how. Um, and that's what I was trying to look for. So hopefully in making this video series with Chase Bank, uh, you invest we'll learn together how to actually take this advice to heart and what we do with it. Um, so now we can just go back to, um, I'm just going to go back to the uh, main page. So I'm going to go to investments. This will bring down the kind of like the whole map and I'm going to go to summary here. Now, one thing we did not cover yet was the, um, 
things you can do button. Uh, so we can take a look at that now. When you click this, it brings down a series of options for statements, tax documents, and shareholder materials. Um, one thing I noticed was that ultimately these three bring you to the same place. So we can take a look at that. So if we click statements here, and then it shows me the different periods. So September 30th, June 30th, April 30th, and um, it will give me a massive financial statement um, that's actually mailed to you unless you choose to go paperless. So this will tell you everything about your account. So here is that statement. Um, you can see on the right hand side the uh, difference from previous period value to the current period. So this goes back to what we were talking about with the gain and loss. Um, that's that referral right there, um, which is given to you on the summary page in a quick snapshot. Scrolling down through the rest of the document, which we will look at in depth at a later video, will show you everything that your account did. Again, this is the um, newspaper version, the paperback version of what the summary page tries to make intuitive for us. Um, so this uh, this document called single, um, really it's the, um, the, the period report, um, uh, is right there if you want it. Um, otherwise, we can look at it on the summary page. So let's go back to that. So back at home base on the, on the summary tab, one thing um, we also can do is if we click uh, trade confirmations, this will take us to all the history, our trading history. So like I said, you don't need to write these things down on your own. If you know how to get to them on the uh, JP Morgan Chase Bank U Invest platform, then it uh, all becomes intuitive for us. So let's take a look at that now. So here's what appears when we click the trade confirmations tab. And if I scroll down, like I said, see how you see all those um, links from before, the statements, tax documents. So they all ultimately bring you to the same place. It's just which drop down do you want to look at? So if we come down, um, you know, it says to me, you don't have any trade confirmations available for this period. Well, that's because I didn't make any trades in the last 30 days. What I can do is see up to the last seven years of trade confirmations. So all I have to do is click this view and then select 2020 for example. Now that I've selected 2020, I can see that I indeed did make two trades, one on, uh, both of them in March, March 9th and March 24th, and these are the details of the trades, and there's not a lot in there, it's just um, whatever that one transaction was. So on the uh, 24th of March, this was the transaction, so this was for United Airlines, um, and it gives you the symbol, uh, the common stock, and how much, the quantity, and the price. So, and then it gives you a trade number. So this is uh, when you don't, you don't need to write down, um, you know, on a little notepad what you did. Um, it gives it to you here if you go into trade confirmations. Now back on the home page and the summary page, uh, one of the other things, uh, we're not going to get into it, um, it's just a blank document, but you can update your beneficiaries. Basically, um, it, you're allowed to fill out this form uh, to give your, your investments to someone in case you die. So that's what, that's what that does. Now for provide cost basis, um, this is something you fill out on your own. So you put in how much you've traded uh, the investment that it was bought at. Um, my guess for that is if you're buying a security that's not registered, 
Um, and there are certain laws that allow you to do that if it's kind of like an in-house transaction type thing. I'm assuming that's what that is for. I've never used cost base, provide cost basis. Um, and my guess is that if we're all just trying to learn this together, none of us will have to worry about this. Um, you can provide up to 10. And again, my, my guess is that it's for um, things that aren't usually considered securities um, that you're just logging for yourself. But really, it looks like something that you're just logging on your own. Um, I experimented with this <laughs> uh, and I just basically put in you know a trade that I did you know I, I wasn't sure if this is just like a journal for me or what this was but nothing really happened I got an email saying that I did it but you know that was all um, so anyway it's not something that you're gonna have to worry about um, and then the um, other thing uh, was the shareholder materials that I just want to touch on um, this basically takes you to another website you know depending on what your security reports um, really I mean you click the shareholder materials and then you click the PDF logo next to your security and Chase Bank will even tell you that you're leaving Chase Bank um, and you're going to the website of your security so it has nothing to do with Chase Bank JP Morgan or you invest um, it's it's just materials linked to the security that you bought so that's I think Chase's way of um, just being convenient for you to give you everything at your fingertips so what else is there we have this pie chart which if you look at the um, statement you know which is much more in depth um, this tells you how you're diversified um, if I hover over this I have 38 percent in US large cap equities which we'll talk about when we discuss trades um, I have mid small to mid cap equities um, and then you also have this you know I have this little thing here 0.06 percent of my investment is just in cash um, so $32 kind of just hanging out there um, the way I've treated it is you know it's, it's not enough to I don't know buy a, a stock maybe Maybe I buy one stock of something, <laughs> but uh, you know, 99% of my um, equity of my securities is in some kind of equity, you know, mutual fund or stock, that kind of thing. And this is just a visual representation of that. Um, if I click View Asset Class, it will take me to the same place as if I clicked um, Positions here in the Investments. Uh, banner. It's the same thing. So we'll talk about that when we talk about um, the rest of these uh, links here. So um, obviously we'll get into transactions as well, which you can also see here. But this is a thorough look at the summary tab in this video. So make sure you follow this channel as we continue to dive into the nuts and bolts of uh, the Chase Bank, JP Morgan, U Invest platform. Um, on the right hand side, it will also show me my top positions, um, which really aren't a whole lot, um, but it tells me how they're doing. Um, I can view the position, and view position also literally takes me just to the positions tab. And we will cover that in the next video in tutorial number two. Um, you can also add stocks to your watch list, um, and then it just gives you an overview of the different um, indexes, the indices. So you have the NASDAQ, S&P 500, and others. Um, and so just telling you how the market is doing overall. So this is the summary tab of the JP Morgan Chase Bank U Invest platform. We will be talking more about U Invest with JP Morgan Chase uh, as we continue these tutorials. So I hope you got something out of it. Take care.